This is a Boston Model 19 electric pencil sharpener, and it has a pretty common failure mode. You can hear it turning, but the pencil sharpener part isn't spinning inside. So let me show you what's wrong and how to fix it. To take the main case apart, there's three screw holes here, and of course, you want to make sure it's unplugged for this. You're going to want a Phillips number two screwdriver for this. I should point out I have already emptied all of the pencil shavings out of this guy. You definitely want to do that before you open it up. So once you take the bottom off, this mechanism lifts right out. There's a little plug here that just will slide out of that plastic. And then you can put all the plastic stuff away. And here we're going to be able to see the problem. So this main gear has some teeth worn off of it. This particular gear here is made out of a plastic that ages and will start to crack and crumble. I've seen them break completely in half or just have gears worn down. Um, and so that will spin until it hits where that worn down gear is with this gear and then it'll just stop spinning. So the, you need to replace this gear to fix that. Now you really shouldn't be messing with this while it's plugged in, but just to show you how it works, there's a little switch here when you push the pencil in, that switch will turn on power to this motor back here, and that motor will just turn this gear. And if there's no resistance, it can sometimes go past where the gear teeth are broken and actually spin this mechanism. As soon as you hit the resistance point, it catches on those uh, broken gears. Now once we have it unplugged again, we can take apart the rest of it with two screwdrivers. So there's two screws here that will take this front bit off, and then these guys little hex head screws, you need a quarter inch hex to take those guys off there to get the motor unit and this small gear out. Now if you're just replacing this gear, it's possible to do that without removing the motor unit. Um, I did that so that I could look at it and see how things went together um, and how everything works. But if you're just replacing the gear, it's possible to pull this out, put a replacement gear in, and push it in. Um, I think it's going to be easier with this out here, but you don't have to, act, have to remove the motor unit. So instructions online basically say you can grab this piece and pull this bit out of the gear. It's probably going to take some force here, so I might get a pry bar and actually pry the gear off the end of it, which is one advantage of having the motor unit out. Well, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. just pulls out. So this is basically a solid single piece with this little gear here that rotates. This guy here fits through that, and when it rotates around, that's what pushes that pencil in. So I'm going to put just a dab of oil on these parts here that rotate, and then we'll put this back together. So I have 3D printed a gear here. You can find the STL file for free online. I'll put in some links. Um, if you don't have a 3D printer, there's people on eBay selling these gears. Um, you can even buy, I think, nylon actual cast gears for just a couple bucks more than the 3D printed ones. Since I have a 3D printer, I just 3D printed one. I figure if it breaks down over time, I can replace it by printing another one. Now, because I 3D printed it, it might be a little tight here. And so... I'm going to test the fit. Actually, that fit might be a little bit loose, really. Um, it looks like it'll be no problem getting that on, and then it just kind of friction fits there. So I think that's going to go on really nicely. So 
so yeah, as easy as it was for me to get that gear on and off just by pulling from the front, I don't think it's necessary to remove this back bit unless your gear is really on there super well. Um, obviously with a 3D printed gear you might need to test fit it and make sure it fits, file a little, sand a little on the inside to get it to fit. Um, but now I have this thing with all my teeth and it's spinning around nicely, so we're going to put it back in the case and give it a test. So this is the old gear I took out. Um, I wish I'd broken it on camera because I just kind of stuck it in my hands and it cracked apart. Um, so the original damage that was keeping it from turning was this little lack of teeth right there. But you can see how this yellow plastic has degraded with age. You know, I can just hold on to it with a couple of fingers and it just it just snaps. So it's also completely possible you'll find this gear completely not attached and snapped in half. Um, but you can see, you know, that's why it needs to be replaced and that's why it's a very common failure mode is just that plastic just over time degrades.